Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our pre-match press conference ahead of tomorrow evening's WSL fixture against Chelsea. We'll start today with an open section for broadcasts before moving into a section for the newspapers. If you'd like to ask a question, please press the raise your hand button. We'll begin with questions from Ian Kennedy at BBC Radio on Merseyside. Hi, Willie. Morning. Um, just, just first of all, great that the game is is going ahead. No, a lot of work would have been going on to, to make sure the game is is played. Um, just, just your reaction to to what happened at the ground must have been heartbreaking for for you and everyone. Yeah, it's just really disappointing. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of work went in at Walton Hall Park to first of all move there, which was the most important thing, and that took a lot of you know probably more emotional time rather than financial. Uh, resource, but more emotional resource in terms of the staff and the people that worked hard to make it happen. And then obviously we have put quite a bit of finance into it. Uh, you know, it's something that we see as not just being for us, but being a community, a community thing. You know, it's obviously an L4 postcode, which was important. Uh, so yeah, it's just really disappointing that that people would 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 target that as something to to try and destroy, basically, and. You know, luckily there's not as much damage as there could have been. Uh, you know, the game will go ahead without any issues. But you know, hopefully we the club the club continue to want to invest in that site because there's obviously going to be you know potentially a question mark around that. But uh, yeah, it's just just pretty sad when you get a phone call on a Friday night and it's somebody's tried to set alight the the ground. And is it something that the players themselves might be affected or distracted by? No, I don't think so. We've not even spoke about it. We've not even spoke about it. You know, the, the pitch is unaffected. The, the changing facilities are unaffected. So the players' areas have not been affected. And, uh, I, I don't think that will come in here at all. Uh, it's a it's a huge game, obviously against um, Chelsea. It doesn't come much bigger than that at at, at the moment, but a, a nice four nil win to go into it on the back of at least. Yeah, yeah, really good four four nil victory on Thursday. I thought we had a slow start. I thought we were a little bit sloppy in and out of possession uh, in the first twenty twenty five minutes. We obviously had the, another early sub to make, uh, which maybe disrupted us a little bit, but. I thought the goal we scored, the first goal was really well worked, and then after that we, we found our found our rhythm and are putting in a really good performance. So it sounds from what you're saying that there's actually more to come from your side. It just, you know, despite the scoreline looks great, you actually felt that there could have been more there. And and you'll probably need that against Chelsea, will you? We definitely need that against Chelsea. If we start like that against Chelsea, there'll, there'll be no game to win because it'll be it'll be gone by half time. Uh, so we need to start really, really well. Uh, we know that from previous games against Chelsea. Uh, you know, I thought we we were a little bit fortunate in the game at Goodison that we survived that first twenty minutes, uh, only being a goal down. But but we showed a lot of resilience that day and fought our way back into the game and and had a fantastic result. And you know, we'll be we'll be looking at that in terms of lessons learned, but also in terms of belief and confidence. And just finally, from me, some some really positive news on on the on the squad front in in terms of Sandy signing a, a new contract extension. You must be really pleased about that. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, obviously, these things always take take time. You know, gone are the days where you sign a registration form and say you want to play beside your mates for a year. You know, which was probably the case, you know, about seven or eight years ago. Uh, but no, we finally got it done. It's. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a good length, I think, in terms of Sandy's short and medium term uh, development and, and career aspirations. And it's, it's obviously a great deal for us to get that done and, and move on to the next one as we continue to build for next season. Thanks, Willie. Thank you, Ian. We'll go to Emma Sanders next, please. Hi, Willie. Hope you're well. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask a little bit on Sandy because obviously she picked up a head injury in that in that uh, win over Birmingham. So yeah, just how is she? Yeah, she's okay. She's uh, she's back on the pitch doing like training. She she obviously won't be available for Wednesday, you know, in terms of the concussion protocols. Uh, she'll be able to take part in the warm up and and help help the goalkeepers' preparation, which is important. You know, they're they're a tight knit team. The goalkeepers, I think, they are at every club. So. Uh, she'll still she'll still be able to try and influence uh, Tenny's performance in a positive way. So, but yeah, she's uh, it's just one of those things. I think she took about three or four knocks in that 
challenge and, and one of them turned out to be slight concussion. So, yeah, it rules her out this game. Yeah, we're well, glad to hear that she's doing all right. Um, yeah, I just want to ask about sort of the reaction to the news that came out last week about the Team GB um, selection players getting told beforehand. Have you had any communication with staff, the players had any communication? Yeah, the, the players have obviously all had their, their letters. Uh, they've, as far as I'm aware, they've had their phone calls as well. Uh, you know, I spoke to a couple of the officials that are involved in the selection process and, you know, to be fair, they've been very apologetic around it in terms of it shouldn't have happened. Uh, shouldn't have happened in the manner it did anyway and on the timing it did. And I think they'll, they'll take a lesson from that in terms of you know future announcements or, or future... Uh, you know, communication has to be better. Uh, we can't have that affecting or potentially affecting players going into an important WSL game. And obviously, that's what's happened to, to young Hannah at Birmingham. Uh, I don't think any other players were affected. I think they dealt with... In fact, one of them never even knew because one of them says, well, you know, two, two and a half hours leading into a game, I'm not looking at my phone. So she never actually got the email. So that probably shows you her professionalism. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think it affected any other players. Which is a which is obviously a good thing. Yeah, and just finally for me, obviously Chelsea up next, nice easy game. Um, do you think that they're they're arguably the best team in the WSL at the moment? Yeah, I've said that I've said that a number of times. I think they're the best team in the country. I think they'll win the league. Uh, I think they've got so many options, so many different types of options, so many different ways of winning games. You know, I think you just need to look at their Atletico Madrid performances. Uh, you know, very professional. Despite, you know, going down to 10 players so early. And, uh, yeah, it'll be also a tough game for us. But it's, it's one that excites me as a coach. It's one that excites the players. You know, we, we felt the scoreline was a little bit harsh when we played them at, at Kings Meadow just the week after the FA Cup final. And I think that still hurts some of the players. So, you know, they'll be looking to, they'll be looking to put, that, put that right uh, on Wednesday. And, as I say, you know, that's, that's the standards we want to compare ourselves to. So that'll be another chance for us to gauge where we are in terms of that. Nice one. Best of luck. Thanks, Willie. Thank you, Emma. Phil Medley, cop next, please. Hi, Billy. Hi, Phil. Um, is there any sense at all of given given Chelsea's like travel last week and the you know their exertions getting that result in the Champions League? Then they had the cup final. Obviously, they looked ruthless in that match, but. That's a pretty hectic few days. Is there any sense you might be able to sort of, uh, they might feel the effect of that and you might be able to sort of catch them, catch them out a little bit uh, tomorrow? I hope so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think that would be the case. I'd, I'd love to think that would be the case, but when you're playing in big games and when you're winning big games, I don't think you get tired. You know, I think they've got huge competition for places. They've got a, a fantastic depth to their squad. And, you know, you saw G and Pernilla Harder not getting a kick in a cup final at the weekend. So there's two players that will definitely be fresh and will definitely be motivated. So, you know, in some ways, it's probably a, a bigger game for them Wednesday. Uh, you know, there's no direct trophy attached to the end result. But, you know, that, I think we're going to last six, seven games every club. And it's a big game in terms of their, their league aspirations. So I can see why Emma left him out of Sunday's game and keep them fresh for, fresh for Wednesday. Yes. Thank you, Phil. Um, we'll go to Peter next. Have you any questions today, Peter? Yeah. Hi. Um, hi, Willie. Um, Willie, um, Sandy said um, in her contract story that um, a big reason for her wanting to stay was, was the fact that you signed a new contract um, recently, a new two-year contract. As a manager, how does it make you feel when a player of that quality highlights that she's got that belief in, in your methods and your vision? Uh, it's nice to hear, obviously. I brought her to the club, so that's probably, you know, got something to do with it. We've got that bond in terms of, you know, that belief in bringing her here in the first place. And and she had a few options at the time, so her choosing the club, you know, shows that, that she's not she's not been disappointed with that decision and she's happy to continue. So it's great. You know, I'm sure all players love the manager when they're being picked and all players have different opinions when they're not being picked. That's football. Uh, we live in a fickle world. But, yeah, let's, I think I think you just you want your players to, to obviously trust you. So it's good to hear. You know, it works two ways. We've got to trust the players, and, and we get that trust every day by seeing them train and 
the way they apply themselves in training. So it's uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's a really big big signing for us going forward. Some things I think renewals are underplayed a little bit. Uh, and everybody looks to new signings in the next transfer window, but sometimes contract renewals are, are just as big, if not bigger, and I think Sandy's is right up there in terms of that. And just one more from me. Um, Willie, um, you mentioned that Sandy won't be available for, for the match against Chelsea. Um, could you update us on any other team news, please? Uh, yep, so Sandy will be missing, so, so you know, we've also got a very, very able deputy uh, who's competing for a place every week with Sandy, and that's Tinny, so Tinny will come in. And the only other one that's, that will miss is Dan Turner. Uh, Dan's <clears throat> still got this little niggling calf problem. And it's just been best, I think, for, for everybody just to, to take her out, take her off feet and try and get to the bottom of it. So, you know, we left her at the Birmingham game because of it. So she'll, she'll also miss this game and hopefully get to the bottom of it as, uh, as soon as possible. Great. Thanks, Willie. Thanks.